Well, Linda and I uh, are out for a little bit of a driving adventure today because the hike we had planned got kind of uh, rained out <laughs> and there's 80% chance of rain today so we're just going to go for a drive and see what we find. Yeah, we can hike another day. We'll do that. We have a hike planned, but we'll have to do it tomorrow, yeah? Yeah. Somewhere up this road, there's a campground, and then there's a lot of dispersed camping along it, along it also. This is the Humboldt National Forest, and it's southwest of Edie, Nevada. But this entire area of, Ma of uh, Nevada is just beautiful. But we've never been uh, anywhere in Nevada that we didn't like. It's, uh, it's just nice. You don't know it. When you're driving through on the highways, it just looks desolate and uninteresting. But when you take the roads and get back into the mountains, it's a whole other story. It's a beautiful state. I think they put the highways there on purpose to make you not want to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. But the thing is not to just come out and go exactly where we go. The thing is to come out and explore for yourself and find your own favorite spots. We want you guys to have fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is a National Forest campground. What you call it, Linda? White River? Well, it's getting a little rough. Another campsite here. How pretty. Complete with a picnic table. Yeah, and even a barbecue table. Huh. No level spot though. Mm. Oh, getting out is going to be tricky. Yeah, it's really rough there. Big rut, big rocks in the rut. Can I make the turn? I can't see on my side. Uh, yeah, you better look. Yeah, pretty nice camp spot, but uh, no place to turn around here. The road does turn around, but it's really a big deep rut here and rocks and no problem for us but I probably wouldn't tow the trailer in here oh, that wasn't too bad well we went ahead and moved campsites we drove in this one and we liked it so much, we went back and hitched up and came back to this spot. And man, is it nice. Look over here. We're not as close to the river, but it's just a 50 yards down there or less. And Where we were before, it was a steep embankment. You know, it was six or eight feet down to the water. And here you can just walk right down to it. So it's going to be much more convenient. Uh, this water is pretty safe. I wanted to show you something uh, concerning safe water. See the water skipper there? He's kind of bopping around. You know what water skippers are? Water skippers are those insects that uh, stay on top of the water. They don't sink. <laughs> But anyways, when you see those, that's one of the signs that the water is uh, not chemically contaminated and that with some filtering, it's safe to drink. Most of the time when we boondock in Nevada, there's no water anywhere to be had. And then finding water in the towns is tough too. Uh, down in Arizona, you've got all those water dispensers every little town has and every gas station. Not so much in Nevada, you don't find any public water, so it's it's hard to find a, a city park or some place that has a faucet. 
Uh, yeah, it's kind of tough, but not here. We got all the water we want. And it's just going through a pile of flakes from tool making. There's two piles like this in this area that we've seen so far. Yeah, picture agate. <laughs> Here's another pile of flakes. This one actually has a couple of tools in it. This one's a broken, one of those round knives, but it's broken. Otherwise it would have been sharp all the way around. And this one is a plane, you know, for plating smooth wood, you know, for planing arrow shafts and things. Yeah, it's pretty cool. This stuff is just laying around here. We're just out exploring a little bit. Oh, there's another big hole. Yeah, why do people dig big holes? Big holes like that. I could see it for a latrine, a latrine or something, but that doesn't look like that's what that was. It's too big for, I mean, too, too wide. Too big for a latrine, yeah. <laughs> Unless you got a big butt. I don't know. That's about four feet across. Okay. Okay. Let's move on. <laughs> Maybe they're looking for gold. Oh, well, could be. That looks like a rock wall. What the heck? A retaining wall. What the heck? Look at this. Huh. It was something before uh, the bank eroded away. This doesn't look Native American the way these rocks are piled. Because, you know, they... they but this is really old, though, because look how it's all filled in with uh, humus. Super old. And um, if that's the front, then that faces directly south. And overlooks the river down below. Oh, hey. There's some wire here around these. Oh, you know what this is? There's some wire. There's three poles and some really old, like, baling wire. That would be like if you had a fire pit here at one time, and that was your cook, to hang your cook pot. I'm just surmising. I don't know. Yeah, this spot is pretty nice. I build here, too. What, Linda? Oh, you've got a suspender buckle. <laughs> well, that's cool. I eyeballed it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, I wouldn't mind having a summer cabin right here. This would be perfect. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's Native American, but it's definitely old. Maybe Trapper era to start out. That would make it close to 200 years old. This would be looking in the front door of it here. The river's uh -huh. behind me. Yeah, whatever it was, it was from when this bank was further that way. The slope wasn't here. Yeah, the slope has eroded away. Yeah. Ooh, look down below. Well, it's right up there. They had a beautiful view. It may have been a trapper's winter quarters because they would set up their winter quarters right next to a stream. They're trapping beaver. So that could have been what that was. And it's probably been used after that by hunters or whoever came through and needed a sheltered spot. Uh, it's pretty nice <laughs> with a quite a view. Sure makes you wonder though, because it wasn't easy hauling all these rocks. <laughs> That's a lot of rock.
Wow, another beautiful morning. And you can hear the waterfall. Yeah, we discovered a waterfall the other day. It's right down there. It's a gusher. I'm just down here getting some water, but I got out my camping RO filter and it brings to mind what just happened in Lahaina. <laughs> Linda's family is from, is, uh, has lived in Lahaina for decades, although none of them were affected by this recent disaster there. I met Linda in Lahaina. It was such a beautiful little town it was. And anyway, what, what the thing is though, is that in the news they said that the residents of Lahaina, the ones whose homes remain, were not able to use the water because it contained benzene. And a reverse osmosis filter like this one takes the benzene out 100%. It takes out all chemicals. So it bothered me that no one told them that they could use reverse osmosis. You can get a reverse osmosis filter for uh, under your sink in your house or even that sits on top of your countertop for under $200 on Amazon. And in an emergency like that, it's invaluable because we need water first and foremost. <laughs> we gotta have water. If you're interested in this filter, I'll put a link to it in the video description. Well, this has been a really nice camp. <laughs>